everyone. We are now in our week 3 and 4, and we're going to use our module 2 entitled Practical Applications of Electromagnetic Waves. So as a review, we have here the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have the seven types of electromagnetic waves in which it is arranged from the longest wavelength up to the shortest wavelength. So we have the radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. Let's proceed now to our learning objectives. Cite examples of practical applications of the different regions of EM waves such as the use of radio waves in telecommunications. After going through this module, you are expected to first explain how radio waves and microwaves used in wireless communications. Second, describe the uses of infrared, visible spectrum, and ultraviolet rays. And the third, describe some practical applications of X-rays and gamma rays. This module is divided into three parts, so we will have Lesson 1, 2, and 3, which discusses from the longest wavelength up to the shortest wavelength. So for Lesson 1, we will discuss about the radio and microwaves in wireless communication. So the first to discuss is all about the radio communication. All of us knows what radio is. So we have here an image of a sample of a radio and as well as an image of an AM and FM. So what is AM and FM and how it is connected to the radio? So we have here, radio waves have the longest wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum. They are produced by making electrons vibrate in an antenna. Medium and high frequency waves are used for broadcasting by local radio stations. So we know what are the local radio stations, right? So each area in the Philippines have its local radio stations. So example, we have the Bombo Radio and then we have the DYHP. In a radio station, sound is converted by a microphone into patterns of electric current variations called audio frequency or AF signals. High frequency radio waves called radio frequency RF carriers can be modulated to match the electronic signal. In amplitude modulation or AM, the amplitude of the radio waves changes to match that of the audio frequency signal. This is used in standard broadcasting because it can be sent over long distances. So for example, sa AM in which we can search for the channel of a double DYHP or even on the Bombo Radio on which we can listen for news, we can listen for the opinions and views of the host and then also we can listen some drama episodes that last like for example is handumanan sa usa ka awit or even kini ang akong suliran next is video high frequency waves provide a higher quality broadcasting including stereo sound in this process instead of the amplitude of the rf carrier it is the frequency of the waves that changes to match that of the signal this is called frequency modulation or fm so when we say am ang mag change niya is ang amplitude of the radio waves while fm is it is the frequency of the waves that changes so example of fm we have the love radio um we have also monster fm MOR, Rock FM, or even Barangay RT. Next, we proceed to the application of microwaves. So, the first one is the satellite communication. Communication satellites travel around the Earth at an altitude of 35,000 km above the equator. They move at a speed of 11,300 km per hour and revolve around the Earth every 24 hours, the same rate as the rotation of the Earth. This makes them appear stationary when seen on Earth. So not all shining materials or particles that you see up above during the nighttime are stars, but they are also satellites. Antenna are mounted to point in fixed directions towards these satellites. Microwaves can penetrate the atmosphere of the Earth. This is the reason why they are used for satellite communications. Microwave signals are transmitted by an antenna to a satellite which amplifies and retransmits the signal to an antenna in other parts of the 
world. This is how we communicate with the rest of the world. Most communication satellites are used to send and receive radio signals for telephone services, while the rest are for television broadcasting, scientific research, and weather forecast. So, during, for example, 24 hours in which we can see a picture or images at the back of Mang Tani, so that is came from the satellites. So, it can be viewed on the satellites on which we can see what happens to the earth itself and if there's a possibility of the creation of possible typhoon that may enter our area of responsibility. The next application of microwaves is the radar. Microwaves have short wavelengths and are reflected by small objects. This property is used in radars. So radar stands for radio detection and ranging. A radar system consists of antenna, transmitter, and a receiver. The antenna whirls around continuously to scan the surrounding area. So this is what we see here, the image of an antenna. The transmitter sends out a narrow beam of microwaves in short pulses. A distant object reflects some of the signal back to the receiver. The direction to which the signal was received gives the direction of the objects. As we can see here on the second image, the distance of the object can be calculated from the time log between the transmitted pulse and the reflected pulse. So radar can be used in the airport, for example, and also in some big ships or cruise ships on which they can detect if there is a coming object near them. So, for example, if you have watched a movie, the ba, kanang mga submarine, or even sa mga uh, warships, the ba, they use radar to locate if there are other ships that are near them, or if there are, for example, missiles that are moving forward to them. So, as well as on the plane, they have also using radar on which they can detect if there is a possible foreign objects or other planes that are heading also at their way so they may able to track if there is an object coming towards them or going away from them another application is the terrestrial communication when we say terrestrial it means land so CATV or cable TV is now used because of its wide range of channels and clearer sound and picture. Moreover, some cable companies provide internet access to users. Microwaves are used to transmit television news coverage from mobile broadcast vehicles back to the station. The news crew can also set up a small antenna to send signals to a communication satellite. This is how news are broadcasted and watched live around the world. So just for example, if there is a scene that needs to be covered so the crew along with its staff will go to that certain area and then they are going to um, deliver the news live so they are using their broadcast vehicle that are connected to the network so, a cell phone is a radio transmitter and receiver that uses microwave. Cellular phone is a sophisticated radio, but still a radio, nonetheless. It is today's answers to the emerging demand for mobile communication. Cellular phones depend on overlapping networks of cells or areas of land several kilometers in diameter. Each cell has its tower that receives and sends microwave signals. So, for example, is each network, for example, so smart, so globe, so sun so tm or even sa talk and text they have their own towers on which it will be used for that certain cell phone to communicate with others so ang cell phone it is having the use of micro waves and then we have here the other applications of microwaves most specifically the microwave oven in a microwave oven foods absorb Certain micro frequencies vary strongly. The microwaves penetrate the food being heated, 
it will agitate the water molecules within the food, thus creating molecular friction which then produces heat that will cook it. So sometimes, we can use it to reheat our food or even cook, for example, pizzas or even cakes or lasagna or another pastries. Next, we have here the lesson 2, which is the application of invisible heat, visible light, and ultraviolet light. So we have here the invisible heat or the infrared radiation. Infrared waves are in the lower middle range of frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum. Infrared radiation lies beyond the red end of the visible light. The size of infrared waves ranges from a few millimeters down to microscopic lengths. The lower wavelength infrared waves produce heat and include radiation emitted by fire, the sun, and other heat-producing objects. Shorter wavelength infrared rays do not produce much heat and are used in remote controls and imaging technologies. The amount and wavelength of radiation depend on temperature. So the human eye is not sensitive to the infrared light used by television remote controls. To send a signal to a television, remote controls often use a diode that emits light. Some digital cameras have filters to block near-infrared light, but most can detect it. It shows up on the screen as if it were visible light. When you press a button on the remote control, the camera may show a pulsing light emitted by the remote. So we are aware, di ba? Pag niklik na to sa remote na asay light na mo reflect the red light on which it is em being emitted. And then, it can be the reason nga mag-change sa channel or sa network. So, another use sa infrared radiation is kanang sa airport. People will go through or pass through an imaging technology machine on which it can detect um, it can detect the temperature if you're having a fever. And also, it can detect the materials that have been put in your baggages. The following are some useful applications of infrared radiations. First one is infrared photographs taken from a satellite with special films provide useful details of the vegetation of the Earth's surface. Second one, infrared scanners are used to show the temperature variations of the body. This can be used for medical diagnosis. So for example, for our today's situation during the pandemic when you enter a store your temperature will be checked using the thermal scanner the third one infrared remote controls are used in tvs video cassette recorders and other electronic appliances number four infrared camera has transmitter that sends out infrared pulses and the fifth one is the night vision goggle these are usually used by the soldiers in the field then we have here the application of visible light so the production of light there are several ways in which a luminous object can be made to give off energy in the form of light a luminous object can produce incandescent light fluorescent light and neon light so the first one here is incandescent light it is a form of light produced by heat ordinary light bulbs in your home are incandescent they produce light when electricity is applied to them inside the glass bulb of a light bulb is a thin wire filament made of metal tungsten. Tungsten can be heated to over 2,000 degrees Celsius without melting. Next is the fluorescent light. Fluorescent light is cooler and uses much less energy than incandescent light. Instead of being used up to build up heat, electrons in fluorescent lights are used to bombard molecules of gas kept at lower pressure in a tube. The color that a fluorescent bulb produces depends on the phosphorus use. And then another one is the neon light that can be seen in thin glass tubes or brightly colored. So, neon light is common among us, especially when we're going to watch some music videos or it can be seen on the signage of the stores. Let's proceed now to the application of ultraviolet radiation and the heat energy. The sun is our main source of ultraviolet radiation, but there are also artificial sources of 
ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet radiation in ultraviolet lamps is used by banks to check the signature on a passbook. The signature is marked on the passbook with fluorescent ink. It becomes visible when viewed under an UV lamp. These lamps are also used to identify fake banknotes. So if you have noticed on some cashiers and banks, if they receive banknotes or paper bills, money bills, they're going to check if it is genuine or fake. UV radiation is also used in sterilizing water from drinking fountains. Some washing powder also contains fluorescent chemicals which glow in sunlight. This makes your shirt look whiter than white light in daylight. UV radiation in sunlight produces vitamin D in the skin and gives us tanning effect. So mostly that's for the reason why most foreigners love to go to the beaches in the Philippines because they love to have this tanning effect in their skin because we are in the tropical country. And now we are in our lesson 3 which discusses the application of penetrating radiation and nuclear energy. Application of X-ray or penetrating radiation X-rays come just after the ultraviolet rays. They are of shorter wavelength but carries higher energy than the ultraviolet. X-rays are produced using an X-ray tube. They are emitted when fast-moving electrons hit a metal target. X-rays were discovered by Wilhelm Conrad Roentgen in 1895. Long wavelength X-rays can penetrate the flesh but not the bones. They are used in X-ray photography to help doctors look inside the body. They are useful in diagnosing bone fractures and tumors. Short wavelength X-rays can penetrate even through metals. They are used in industry to inspect welded joints for faults. Lastly is the application of gamma rays or nuclear energy. Gamma rays lie at the end of the electromagnetic spectrum. They are shortest in wavelength and highest in frequency. Gamma rays are emitted by only the most energetic cosmic objects such pulsars, neutron stars, supernova, and black holes. Terrestrial sources include lightning, nuclear explosions, and radioactivity decay. Gamma wave wavelengths are measured on the subatomic level and can actually pass through the empty space within an atom. Gamma rays can destroy living cells. Fortunately, the Earth's atmosphere absorbs any gamma rays that reach the planet. Gamma rays carry the highest amount of energy, thus they are more dangerous. They can also be blocked with lead and thick concrete. Gamma rays are very strong that they can kill living cells. Gamma rays are used to treat cancer through the process called radiotherapy. They are also used for sterilization of drinking water. So that would be all for today's lesson. Hopefully you have learned a lot. Thank you. Be safe always and God bless you.